Sorry, Lucy. Uh, it's Pina Sundance. Uh, never mind the, the profile name. <laughs> uh, morning, everybody. Sorry. Um, uh, just to, to Jacques. Jacques, what, what, obviously, Graham's been in the position since um, late last year. What are the, the, the key points that have influenced this decision to, to, to appoint him on a two-year uh, contract? I think we wanted to appoint him um, permanently from the word go, um, but there was a lot of uncertainty at the time. So, um, you know, Graham, Graham wanted to also have the opportunity to see if environment is acceptable for us. It also gave us, of course, an uh, opportunity to um, see if the partnership can work. I've definitely worked well, well with Graham. Um, and, and again, you know, the leadership that he brings to, to the position. Um, that's vital and crucial to us. So um, obviously we, we're extremely happy with, with his performance up, up to now. It is short and, and you can only expect a certain um, impact within three or four months. Um, so Graham would have influenced the, the on-field play probably in a, in a, in a, in, in a three-month period coming into the series. I mean, literally, I think we were two weeks before the England series. We, we expected him then to, um, you know, get appointments done, um, review our pipeline, uh, and then of course we hit the crisis where, where Graham, you know, also played, played a big big role in, in giving us leadership. So um, you know, we're obviously very very keen for him to to continue. If if that helps you, and thanks, thank you for the um, for the question. Hello. Jack, um, we've seen that Cricket Australia, for example, have taken massive pay cuts and, and other um, organisations around the world are talking of similar. What is Cricket South Africa's position there and, um, you know, is there anything you can tell us about the financial position going forward? Uh, I guess everybody's financial um, setup's a bit different and, and I'm, I actually look into why, um, you know, other sporting federations do, you know, these things and, and like some extreme uh, measures. I think our money available for players will be less, um, but probably in the in the forthcoming not not uh, the forthcoming season, but the season thereafter when we restructure the domestic play. Um, but a lot of your money has already flown, so your your broadcast rights are, uh, have already been sold. So um, for now, we, we're not we're not in um, we don't have to cut at this stage. It's not to say that it would not happen going. Um, you know, in future, but at this stage, you know, there's no indication for us. We haven't lost income at this stage that will trigger such a cut. It's actually quite drastic as well. So, but it depends on the makeup of your of your of your income streams. Um, sometimes it's also a very good positioning to um, qualify for um, you, you know government aid. But but we we that scenario is not being triggered by us. We we first got to lose um, substantial money before that happens. Uh, um, I can give you a good example. Um, if we lose home Indian content, that, that might trigger it. That might trigger a certain cut, but it hasn't happened. So for us, it could be in a scenario planning, but, but you know, it's too early for us to, to do such a drastic statement. Jack, sorry, you said the, uh, the broadcast rights um, have already been sold. So that wouldn't be affected even if there is nothing to broadcast. So, so remember, your historic rights are, are being sold, and that gets paid, and, and, and over a certain period of time, ours were actually sold for eight years. So it's still money that flows flows into into your account. If your future um, content, um, if that doesn't take place, then then your money gets cut. But that's still got to flow. That's still got to got to come in. So, um, at this stage, we we're monitoring it, but you know we can't make a decision to cut salaries if we haven't experienced the actual loss yet. That would probably be, that might be a responsible thing to do um, at this stage. Um, I, I can honestly say that the way we're going to restructure cricket, there will be less money available. Um, that that is in our predictions, and and hence your domestic restructuring done by the um, Richardson Commission will have to take that into account the amount of money that's available. Uh, and, and for those of this can help everybody as well, we were hoping to, to actually um, have a clear indication in June of, of the future domestic playing structure, and, and that's going to be moved. Um, we haven't decided on a, on a date, but there won't be enough indicators in June because that's still in our off-season. 
So the effect of the virus has been delayed when it comes to um, cricket South Africa, but it will it will come. There will there'll be a negative effect on us, um, but, but we can't predict the impact at this stage. If it helps you with those. Um, Thanks for those. Uh, next up, Ken. Uh, hi, Jacques. Just uh, kind of following on from Fidoza's question about Australia, um, I see there has been some talk about the ICC World T20 being postponed until next year. Um, uh, have you heard anything about that? Has there been any sort of communication with Cricket South Africa? Um, morning, Ken. Thanks. Thank you for the question. Um, we have a, a conference, teleconference with the ICC next Thursday. Um, on this. So it'll be all the chief executives next Thursday that will be on a conference. We haven't gotten any official notice of this and I think they, they're pretty much in the same um, boat as we are in, in that, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty at this stage. Factors that will influence this big time is of course international travel. You know, when, when is international travel open? I guess you can play it be, be behind lock locked doors, uh, um, that, that is a possibility. You still got to travel, you still got to get visas. And um, probably more um, clarity next Thursday. Um, although, you, you know, they also cycle there that we, we speak to on a, on a regular basis. And I think there's still a lot of uncertainty. Hopefully next Thursday, there will be a bit more um, um, certainty. And, and we're happy to report back on it um, again once, once we've got some guidance from, from the ICC. <coughs> Thank you, Ken. That uh, helps you. Thanks, Doc. Uh, Tennis? Uh, um, isn't it Johnny first? Yeah. Oh, oh sorry, my apologies. Sorry. <laughs> um, ja, I think my question is to Jacques. You mentioned. Um, conversations with uh, sponsors that have obviously been affected now with the um, lockdown regulations in place. Just in terms of, and in December, you'd spoken about possibly going back to Standard Bank and renegotiating. Has there been any movement on renegotiating with Standard Bank on that? Um, and I don't know if I can squeeze in a second question around the broadcast regulations and when that new contract would come into place. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, let me start start with the Standard Bank uh, question first. Yeah, they they um, until the end of this month. Um, we hope to be you know in conversation with them, even if it's just to thank them um, you know for their for their uh, contribution to cricket over a very long period of time. Uh, it's it's almost their second innings as well. Um, but you know the last conversation we had with with Standard Bank. Um, I guess that that is the status quo at, at at this stage, but we will engage with them, and and we have been sending them updates on on our progress in terms of improving our governance um, situation, and and we'll definitely have a have a conversation still within this month. Broadcast regulations, yeah, we've we've done certain um, submissions, um, and we be waiting for the um, you know rulings rulings to come out to see how that that might um, you know affect. It will speak to exclusivity um, of, of certain events, and, and I guess um, also to listed events uh, that cannot be sold uh, exclusively. But you know, we, we're probably still waiting to analyse that a bit. I'm just sorry. The, there was a line that cut out in the Standard Bank uh, response. So is that not? Um, are they not um, coming back on board yet? No, no. At this stage, I, I guess the status quo is they, you know, they're, they're still leaving at the end, end of the month. Thank you. Thank you, Jacques. Uh, Tennis? Yes, yeah. Tennis? Um, okay, while we wait for Tennis to log on again, um, we'll go to Silly Cecil. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I can hear you. Okay, 
Great. Uh, my question is for Graham. Graham, uh, since your uh, permanent, so to speak, uh, appointment, have you thought of um, the uh, coaching staff for the for the Proteas men's, uh, Proteas women's, and and the uh, uh, under nineteen men? Uh, whether uh, they should be renewed? Have you given any thought as far as uh, that's concerned or is it still a bit too early uh, to to judge? Um, thank you. Um, with, with regards to the, the, the Proteus men, I mean, the, the core structure of the management team is there um, with Mark Enoch, Charles Langefeld, Justin Antong, <clears throat> and uh, both the, the uh, Tumi, the trainer, um, the physio and, and the management is in place. Um, <clears throat> we haven't uh, progressed on the consultants yet. Um, you know that's something that we will be looking at. I think the, the COVID virus has put a few things on hold at this stage um, in terms of planning. Um, and, and consultants will, you know, we need to have some good strategy sessions around the pipeline consultants and uh, those that are going to consult based on the tours and and, and the formats that are coming. Uh, coming up in our in our FTPs um, on on the women and the under 19s we've uh, advertised well those those positions have been in the pipeline to be advertised for even before when I got in, in the job um, so we've run that process uh, all all employ all, all people who are in position are still on on the payroll and running uh, running those positions. Um, and available to advertise, uh, put their name in the hat uh, in the advertisements, but we won't be uh, making any decisions on that. We will be collecting all the all the all the information um, going forward. I think as COVID has created a lot of uncertainty, we're going to um, take our time uh, and strategize and see where the organisation sits uh, over the next coming months. <clears throat> Sorry, as a follow up to that, Graham, um, are you happy with the? the senior men's uh, coaching group whose contract expires at the end of this year? Uh, are you talking about the, the Protea men? Um, they, they appointed to 2023. Uh, all those four core coaches uh, are appointed to 2023. So Antong, Boucher, Enoch, um, and Langefeld are all appointed to 2023. Dennis, I don't know if you're back on. I'll sleep again. Uh, then we'll go with uh, Phila again. <laughs> Thanks, Lucy. Uh, my question is for Graham. Graham, I think, firstly, congratulations on um, your, your, your extension of your contract. Um, but I think the, the, the topic of the callbacks will be something that will, will always be ongoing. Um, particularly now that the, the, the current COPEC situation ends at, um, uh, at, the, at the end of the year. Is Dennis back? We'll yeah. get, uh, Dennis will uh, follow up after you then. <laughs> All right, cool. Just, Graham, have you thought about that process um, of, of uh, sort of welcoming or identifying players that might still have uh, uh, some sort of contribution to the national cause? Is it something that Cricket South Africa would uh, consider, or is it something that it, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a closed door that's not going to, to be reopened ever again? Oh, no. uh, thank you initially uh, for the congratulations. Um, I appreciate thank that. I'm looking forward to hopefully making a big impact uh, with the, the rest of the staff. Um, on, on the Colpec issue, I'm sorry, um, things I, I, Sorry, uh, someone else talking. <laughs> yeah, I think that's Tennis's uh, that's mic. <laughs> Tennis, do you want to just mute quickly? <laughs> um, so, yeah, on, on the coal pack issue, um, I think obviously it's been a complex issue for, uh, for a number of years. Um, I think uh, yes, we have... We, thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a... Uh, um, 
a number of committees and uh, obviously uh, board resolutions on the coal pack that need to be debated and, 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 and looked at. But with the coal pack coming to an end, I, I guess the willingness is to always have our, our best players back in the system. Um, you know, I guess the issue has been around the coal pack and with that fading away, you know, it's really up to the players to, to come back into the system to, to make the decisions on their career. From, from our perspective, you know, we want to encourage you know, all our best players to play, yeah, both domestically uh, and then give themselves the opportunity to be selected for the national side. I guess that, that for us is, is always the way that we want to look at it. Um, we don't ever want to exclude players from being a part of our system. Um, we understand that the landscape of, of the world game is very different now to what it was, you know, a number of years ago. So, you know, I think, an, an, uh, you know, open mind and how we look at these things is, is going to be key to one, how we keep our best players, how we keep them motivated, how we keep them in our game. Great, thank you. Tiernas, we'll try again. <laughs> Okay, well, we'll, we'll, um, we'll uh, go to, back to Fidoz. Um, just to follow up on the previous question. So when um, the, the franchise contracted squads were announced, there was some sort of, I guess, criticism from, from some of the franchise coaches that they felt the process was... Um, too open because there were too many contracts up for grabs and they worried about what will happen next season. I know it's probably a bit early to be asking this kind of question, but what is the the kind of long-term plan for contracting players and for um, for ensuring that people are, are not getting unhappy as maybe was the case a couple of weeks ago? And I'm talking specifically about, um, we, you know, we had the situation with Dane Patterson and uh, it seemed like the Cobra's management were upset with the contracting process. Well, I mean, oh, Jacques, do you want to take it? Um, th thank you, Lucy and, I'm, and Graham. Please come in um, um, as, as well um, after I've, I've contributed. Um, so, I, I guess firstly, one needs to understand with those, and thank you for the question that the, the um, franchise coaches themselves contract their teams, and they got to convince their players, you know, to play for them and to be contracted, um, and, you know, as such. And, and coming from a franchise and being in, involved from the, the start of with the, with the franchise is one, one would hope that um, your players would stay um, because CSI would contract them or, you know, uh, give them certain certainty of playing. But that, that is very difficult to do um, because in a, in a performance-based industry, it is very difficult to say to somebody that you will always play. You know, and that. And I guess the, the problem that you sit with is nobody wanted, wants to lose a, a good player either to call back or to free agency. Um, but it starts off with, with the franchise themselves that's got to contract people and, and, and provide um, opportunities. So um, I thought about that and, and it is difficult to solve it other than saying then if you're going to lose a player and, and, and um, we, we will then give him a guarantee that he can play and he's in the plans. And that's just not, that's just not possible. Um, I don't think we've worked out how teams will contract in the past, but you know, people leave on their own accord. You know, nobody forces a player to take the contract abroad as well. So that's the first decision. Uh, and, and you know, it is sad coming from a Titans environment. If you, if you really list the players they've lost over you know a couple of years, um, I, I can imagine that coaching staff's not not happy with it. But I'm not sure what we can do um, from a national side. I mean, you can communicate with people can even indicate to them that, um, you know, they, they are in, in consideration. Um, but it is very, very difficult, uh, um, you know, to give guarantees on, 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 on people playing. So, you know, we note the disappointment from, from coaches. But, you know, maybe they can come up with a workable plan for us because it is very, very difficult to help them in this regard. And remember, we all want to retain um, the best players for South Africa. Jack, yeah, just in terms of the number of players, because it sounded like... I don't know, eight or ten, I don't know what the number was. You know, spots needed to be contracted. Is it, is it more than previously and will it be more than what is to come in the future? Like, how come it's eight and not five or whatever? 
Yeah, yeah look, we haven't worked that out. So we first got to work out the playing structure now. They're going to, um, um, you know, do that. The other factor that will come in now as well is, is how much money we've got to contract players, um, which in the past wasn't such a um, such a big, big big consideration given our financial situation. But that will impact, um, you know, um, as well. Um, but you know. It is sad when players leave. We we want to hang on to our best players, and so with every franchise. I I can I appreciate that coach feeling passionate about players leaving, but I think it's more of a collective effort than just sorry, CSA. You know, you you've got to get him in the in the national system so that we can retain him so that he can play for me at the franchise level. I I'm I'm not sure if, if, if that's a system you know, you know where we can criticize unfairly. If if, if that answers it. Um, so, if I can come in there, for those, I mean, I, I'm obviously new to the, the, the system and we, we, are, we are always, you know, consistently reviewing it now. But, I mean, uh, just to give you a breakdown, I mean, the, the, in the MOU, there's 17 national contracts that are available. Um, and then I think franchise contracts are allowed to contract between 15 and 18, 18 players. A number of those are allowed to be two years. And obviously, with the talk of restructure and, and reviewing the structures of our game, um, you know, that those things have, have been taken into consideration over the contracting. So, you know, having been initially a part of the Dane Patterson conversation, I think a lot of this lay with, with the Cobras. And, um, you know, as I said to you when we spoke, you know, I think we, we were almost you know, tempted to be pushed into offering a national contract and was taken to the selectors and, and they felt that, you know, Dane, you know, wasn't you know in in, in that discussion. In that discussion. So, uh, then then that falls on on the franchises to then handle the contract discussion with Dane. So maybe there's some sort of communication issue. Well, uh, he, he, his previous contract has always been with the Cobras, so I don't understand why. You know, the, the, the national process has been the same for a number of years. Um, and, you know, I guess he, he's not had a national contract. It's not like he lost a national contract. Um, you know, maybe he created an expectation of getting, you know, being a part of the test, test squad. Uh, maybe that was his own expectation. Um, you know, I, I, I also, I think, you know, there, there hasn't been enough communication from him on this, you know, which, is, which has been disappointing. We don't want to lose players. I think with the Colpac situation coming to an end, it, you know, and it was a surprising decision from him. Great, thank you very much for those. And uh, Neil, a right, question for for Graham and then and then Jacques as well. I think um, Graham, you obviously had uh, reservations about the CSA executive environment, and and I just wondered whether you were able to share any reassurances that you've had um you took the position in an acting capacity and and uh, assuming that some things must have changed or perhaps i'm wrong for you to take it in a permanent capacity and um in, ter in terms of the executive environment jacques i wonder if you can give us an update on the various um disciplinary hearings um what's the status of nasi up here clive Eckstein, corey van sale and the audit Graham, first of all, has anything changed um, for you to take it on a permanent capacity? Uh, thanks, Manners. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I mean, I think uh, if, I, if I told you I had 100% certainty, I'd be, I'd be lying to you. I mean, I think there's been so much uh, you know, doubt over the last period uh, on all fronts that, you know, it's impossible to uh, have that, that certain feeling. But I, I think that over the last period, operationally, I've got to know the staff. Um, and the organization within we working i've seen the you know a lot of hardworking people that care deeply about the game um and you know over three months i've become invested i guess in the position and started to to care about uh you know responsibility to the game uh, sorting it out getting us back to the top of of, of of performance and also you know started to care about aspects of the business of the game you know which is which is I guess not really my mandate, but uh, have played you know um, you know certain certain roles in that with Jacques. Uh, and I think operationally, you know, working with the CEO and the rest of the staff has created um, that you know that, that feeling for myself that I want to get in, get stuck in, and, and try and make a difference. And hopefully, the elements around um, <clears throat> the operational staff get get 
you know, get sorted out and get stronger over the next period. I think that that is obviously a key, a key element that I think Shark will obviously touch on now. Thank you. Neil, um, good morning. Thank, thank you for your um, question. And I think quite, um, you know, it is very important uh, and governance issues that still, still unfortunately, a lot of them uh, still in the air. Um, uh, firstly, the, the um, disciplinary hearing. So for uh, Corey's uh, back, so he's, uh, that, that was concluded. Um, Masai up here has not concluded. Clive Eckstein has not, uh, not com concluded um, as well or completed. So we're still waiting for that. Unfortunately, the COVID-19 lockdown um, hasn't helped us. Um, so, so it probably would take a, a little bit longer. The, the forensic audit started, but only had about a week and a half before um, lockdown. They're still doing it remotely. I'm not sure if it's delayed. We haven't got any um, indication that it'll take longer then the three months they were allocated at the time. Um, we're having bi-weekly meetings with them, so if that changes, we will communicate it. But the forensic uh, audit's definitely going on. Um, Neil, if that helps you, I'm going to take a uh, um, I just wondered how, how long does a disciplinary hearing take? Um, like, Nassai and, and, uh, and Clive, it's been, it's been months. Uh, so it's done by independent legal practitioners. So um, it's not in our hands. It's not that we can we can stimulate it. And because of the um, high profile nature of these cases, um, I do think they they uh, probably would uh, um, want to take uh, or go through a thorough process. But it's not something that we can stimulate it, um, you know, or speed it up in any way. Um, you know, chairperson of the disciplinary committee is, uh, is appointed um, and then he runs the process. Um, you know, it's our profile um, people and, and it, it's, it has taken quite long. Uh, Neil, I, I must be honest, it, um, it is a bit longer than one would have, would have hoped for the initial process. But again, I'm not sure the impact um, of, of um, the lockdown on it uh, as well. Uh, I know it's not a lot of clarity, but it's probably the best I, I can do on that. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Slowly. Great. Um, my questions are for Jacques, just, or maybe this one is also with um, Graham as well. The appointment of Dinesha to that under 19 position, is there a view to possibly um, Dinesha being the head of the Momentum Proteas, or what's the plan? What was the thinking around her appointment? Um, and um, what is the, at the moment, what is um, Hilton's future? Is there a future beyond the next year's World Cup, or will he be in charge at next year's World Cup? Um, and then um, I know last year, at the end of last year, the minister had said that SASCOC and CSA should meet to have a conversation because of the things that were happening at the time. But we see that SASCOC has its own governance issues. Did that meeting happen um, and what happened after that? I'm happy to answer the SASCOC question, Graham, and you can, I, I think Graham if, um, are probably better suited to answer the, the rest. The, the meeting with SASCOC did take place and we gave them an update the basis on, on, on the progress um, related relating to our governance um, issues. So. We in daily contact, or on, on at least weekly contact, with uh, with um, the acting CEO. Um, so yeah, we did we did have a formal meeting, and we've we've been requested in the meeting to give them updates as we go along, and we do that to the minister and SASCO. Um, if that if that answers your question. Um, can I just follow up on that? I mean, given that they're also having their own um, very serious governance issues, um, what input are they giving? Um, look, on an operational level, um, I mean, I also got an acting CEO talking, I guess, to an acting CEO at Cricket South Africa, but at, at least we, uh, we, 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 we in the chair for now. Um, yeah, look, we've noted the, the, the governance um, issues, received communications, but to be fair, I, I think they, they just need an um, um, a update on our, our progress on, on the forensic investigation you know, some of the other issues they they, they got to um, deal deal with. Um, I, I 
I can't really comment on, on the on, on issues and if that helps you. Sorry. Thank you. Um, if I can jump in and answer the other relevant questions, I mean, uh, I guess the under 19 appointment is we've always, it's always been in the pipeline to beef up and, uh, you know, really look at how we can strengthen women's cricket. And I guess uh, Dinesh's appointment to the under 19 uh, is, you know, I think, credit to that. Um, that we, we, you know, we want to improve you know, the pipeline uh, to our pro tier women national side. and. Um, you know, I think as women's cricket grows, uh, the more experience comes available in, in players that have played and been a part of those, um, those teams and, and, and been a part of uh, the international game on the women's front. So that's an element that we're certainly always looking to develop uh, and get more IP in um, because certainly it is different to the men's game and, and a different way of thinking and, um, and, and faces different challenges. So those, those are elements that we, we're always considering well, certainly now, considering in our, in our decision making, uh, on Hilton and and the women's management team, I think they've obviously been in those positions for an extended amount of time, and and I think even before I got into the job, it was the plan to to review um, those positions post the World Cup uh, with a view to take forward and see where we sat as an environment. You know, um, what you know, I've gone and done uh, a number of. Uh, one-on-one -on -one conversations with all the players in the women's environment, uh, certainly all the contracted players. Um, I've provided uh, you know, a number of discussions and taken an immense amount of feedback on where they see the environment, uh, how they see uh, areas that they can improve, how we can improve them. Um, so we've done extensive work around um, the women's team. Um, but by no means does it mean that Hilton's going to lose his job. We're running a process, we're running a review process, and I guess with the goal to, to making our women's team the best we can possibly make it. Um, and as I said earlier, we've advertised those positions. All current management are, are able to put their names in the hat again. Uh, and we will, I guess, run that process slowly now based on, on, on the COVID uh, challenges that we face and see where we sit in a couple of months. So, just will he be the coach at next year's World Cup? I, I, I can't tell you that now. We're running running the advertisements, and uh, we'll run that process through the next couple of months. But he is the man in the position at the moment. Thank you. Next up, Telford. Um, Graham, I'm sure a couple of weeks ago, even um, appointing a new Test captain may have been somewhere near the top of your list, and I imagine now it's kind of slid down. Um, who, you know, have you given any thought to that? And, and maybe you've made up your mind already. I mean, you're not going to see much cricket to back up your mind, uh, you know, on, on who that might be. Where, where's that situation? I, I think the one definitive answer that I can give you, Telford, is that it's not going to be Quinton. Um, I, I can't tell you who it's going to be. I mean, we, we're in a debate uh, over it and, and a strategy, I guess. Um, there's no, I, I, to be honest, there's no one person that really you could pinpoint right now and say that's the guy. I mean, there's still a lot of players that are, are vying for selection. And I think, you know, it's kind of the challenge that we sit with at the moment. There's a lot of players on a similar level. Um, and, and I guess the challenge for the next period when we do play some cricket is to see who escalates themselves, uh, you know, into, into, you know, really consistent performers, uh, you know, steps out. And I, and I guess, you know, really we've got to, you know, understand the personalities. We've got to look at the people, um, maybe take a risk on, on someone potentially and, and, and back them. Uh, try and understand who's got some, some credibility within the environment from a leadership perspective and a respect. Um, you know, coming from a person who a risk was taken on, you know, it is something that we would certainly consider. Um, but I guess a whole lot of considerations. But I think the one thing that I can confirm is that Quinton will be our white ball uh, captain and, and, we will, and he, he won't be the test captain going forward. Cool. Thank you. Ken? Yeah, Graham. Um... <laughs> Just two questions, if I may. One, a, a follow-up to Telford's question. Um, Quinton not being test captain, is that based on conversations you've had with him in, in terms of workload? And, and he's obviously stated his desire to continue as the test wicketkeeper. And then just my second question was, I, I know you've only been acting in the job for five months. Uh, but what do you feel have been the sort of areas that you've really ticked off that you've... Uh, 
competed? What, what are you most proud of achieving in those five months? <laughs> um, no, I, I guess it's one of those jobs, as you, you know, initially it's, it's a lot of learning, Ken. You know, I think it's taken an extensive amount of time to understand why decisions have been made, what strategies have been in place. I mean, I think also on a, on a weekly basis, we faced a, a number of challenges from repairing, you know, commercial relationships, signing broadcasters, making sure the flow of money into our game has, has been decent uh, before COVID hit um, so that we have, you know, ability to make the right decisions. You know, I think, you know, I think initially it surprised me how much coaching I think had to take place at a national level. Um, I feel that our players need access to really smart, uh, smart coaches, smart people um, to develop their games and, and their thinking around uh, playing at, at the highest level. So that is something that I, I certainly have learned over this period. We've also um, cast a net quite wide. I think for me, it was really about trying to understand a group of players that we could move forward with. I mean, hopefully our domestic uh, game will get stronger and stronger and, and pop out a, a number of players for us to, to select. But uh, I think for us, it was on, on a national level, really trying to understand... Uh, you know, who the players we have to work with, how do we get them better and how do we get ourselves back to the top of, of all three formats uh, and, and hopefully pushing for, you know, initially to win that, that 2020 World Cup in, in Australia, which is obviously, you know, um, because of COVID is, you know, a little bit uncertain now. Um, then I think it's been about building relationships. I think we needed to strengthen a lot of relationships across the board with SACA, with, with our player, in, uh, player pools on both the women's side and the men's side. And I think we've, we've done uh, an extensive amount of work there. Uh, you know, we've had really open um, two-way discussions. Uh, I think players are feeling a lot more settled and, and, and uh, comfortable to express themselves now. And I think there's, there's a good feedback uh, and, and conversation trail that's happening on, on both sides, which I think is hugely important. Um, that had all come to an end when I got into the job. Um, so, yeah, and I think, Probably, you know, those things uh, stand out. Uh, and as I say, you know, um, we're facing challenges every day. Um, we've now put together, just for your own information, I, I don't know if I touched on it last time, 47 players are in a high-performance training program that's, uh, you know, from a fitness perspective at the moment. And we're reviewing it based on the government's policies of how we're going to run our winter programs. Uh, we've got the National Academy running and the, and the women's program is running. And, you know, players have been excellent. The feedback's been ex excellent on, on the work that they're managing to get done, even in, in, in sort of limited, uh, you know, use at home. Um, so, yeah, I, I think we've opened up a lot of uh, areas that, are, that were closed off uh, before I got into the job, which I think is, is, is important. And then just about uh, Quinton and whether the decision was based on discussions with him, workload, wanting to still be the test wicketkeeper? I, I, I think that it really is about that. I, I think we want to keep Quinton fresh and playing well. And, 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 and I've always believed, having been in the job myself, that, you know, captaining all three formats is, is challenging. Um, and I think, you know, you've seen a number of nations try and work out what's best, two and one, you know, I think, you know, three across three formats probably doesn't work. Um, you know, so we felt that Quinton, you know, from a workload and a mental capacity, you know, to burden him with all three formats, um, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't be beneficial for us. Um, uh, and, and the style of personality and, and player that he is, you know, we want to keep him, you know, as expressive as, as possible. Great, thanks. Uh, Pilar, next. Yeah, thanks, Lucy. Um, my question is for Jacques. Jacques, I'm not sure if, if it was touched on a little bit earlier on in, in, in the other teleconferences, but the, the new structure, uh, the new domestic structure, how long are CSA um, keen on trialing that? I know it's, it's not a final sort of uh, a format um, going forward. And also what has been the feedback from the various uh, franchise coaches? I know we spoke to uh, Astral Prince a couple of weeks ago and he wasn't, you know, sort of happy with the, 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 the proposed um, sort of format. How's the reaction been from, from franchise coaches and, and how long are CSA, you know, sort of 
happy to to, to trial the, the the format for. Thank you, and, and um, yeah, thank you for, for the for the question. Um, so the the forthcoming season season twenty twenty one will be similar to the the, the franchise um, um, system. So you have your six teams um, playing in in the fifty over and the four day competition, and then we'll like to make an announcement on the on the T uh, twenty format. Um, we haven't decided on a new new um, uh, um, format um, going forward. Dave Richardson and the committee of which Graham's part of, SAC has been part of that as well. So the players will have a, have a, have a voice in it. And, and I'm sure there will be consultation um, with, with the coaching staff and CEOs to, to look at um, how we look um, to, to run the new process. Um, and I think it will be a trial period, to be fair. It will be a decision on, on um, you know, it's either all 12 or 8-6 or 6-6 or whatever format they decide or, you know, um, white ball playing played by certain teams and, um, you know, uh, um, the four-day cricket maybe in a, in, in, a, in a different format. So we haven't, we haven't worked out the, um, the way forward on it. Um, and, and, you know, we've got to listen to the coaches. Um, I, I'm, I'd be surprised if Ashville's already angry and we haven't even worked out the format. But the, um, you know, you know we, we need input from from all our coaches. I, um, you know, I, I I think you've got to listen to them. Um, they've got to have an input, and I'm sure Graham and, and and Dave Richardson will take take that on board. I do think um, for the first time. In, since probably uh, the, the franchise started because we didn't have enough money to, to fund all 11 teams. I was even a CEO back, back then in 2003. And money will play um, a deciding factor again um, on, on how we, we do it. There will only be a certain amount of uh, um, money available. I, you know, we, I mean, you've got to respect people that's passionate about the, um, um, you know, affiliate or franchise team and wants to see the best for the country. So, you know, and, and that, context I respect and we respect the Ashel's point of view I'm sure he respects ours as well and um, but we haven't uh, we haven't even come up with a system that decision will be a little bit delayed now we were hoping to have more certainty in June but because of the COVID-19 and the impact on our finances that it will be a little bit delayed the one thing I can say um, I really want to thank Andrew Gretzky and Saka for how they've uh, worked with us in the last couple of months. Uh, I think we've established a very good working relationship with SACA. I think a person like Andrew Gretzka brings a lot of um, uh, credibility to the process, but not just that. I think he contributes a lot. Um, he consults well with, with players. He's an experienced um, sports practitioner. He's a top legal um, man. So he's brought a lot of, uh, I, I think, uh, influence to, to our decision making. Um, he's been very busy. We've included him on the COVID-19 steering committee. They, they're back on the uh, um, CEO's committee. So they, they now sit on all, all our committees again. And he, he, and he does contribute um, quite a lot. And hence, maybe you make a good point, and, and, and I'm sure Graham will note this, that it might be of, of good value to to include the um, you know the, the domestic coaches and some of these forums to, to provide us a bit of input from their side as well. If that answers your your question. Great, thanks, Super Cecil. Hi, um, my initial question was for Graham, um, but it's been answered. It was regarding the Test uh, captain, but I'd like to redirect another question to Jacques. Um, uh, pardon me if I've missed it or it's already been addressed, but um, I'm following up on Manners' question regarding outstanding legal and governance procedures. And I want to know, is there a resolution regarding Tabang Mure's um, uh, place in the organization? Has he officially left or is he uh, still undergoing that disciplinary process? And what's the status with regards to your position as CEO, Jacques? Is that now permanent? Um, or when can we hear a resolution with regards to that? Thank you for, for the question. Um, I'm definitely not, not permanent at, at this stage. So that's probably the, um, the easiest uh, um, of the questions to answer. I'm unfortunately not involved in any of 
um, the issues re related to Tabang, um, I can probably confirm that he hasn't left, but it is being dealt with by the board itself, which I think is correct. Um, you know, I think they, they must deal with him. And um, whilst that issue is not being dealt with, you know, the permanent uh, position for CEO cannot all, um, be, be dealt with uh, as well. But, but um, it's my understanding that uh, it's not, not being dealt with and it's maybe something and I, I hate not to answer questions, but it's in this case, I, uh, you know, I, I don't deal with it um, at all. The disciplinary um, matters, so uh, Corey has been dealt with. Uh, the, I, can, I can probably confirm that they're, they're in their final stages. Um, but again, it's a process that started prior to me being appointed. Um, Consail has been dealt with. The others are, are um, um, there, there's a few, um, Kutu, I think, uh, has, has been dealt with and that's been reported. But, you know, the high profile one, Clive X10 is still ongoing. Um, and, and Nasai up here is still ongoing. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to avoid the questions around Tabang, but I honestly, I, uh, you know, I'm, I don't deal with it at all. Um, apologies for that. And then uh, we're going to round up on the English question. So we're going to go Colin and then uh, Khalid. Graham, you spoke last time about needing at least six weeks before uh, the players would be ready to play cricket again. Uh, there's a couple of tours, and I know it's obviously very difficult to be sure of what's going to happen with COVID, but are there any tours that are definitely off the table? For instance, Sri Lanka is basically just a month or so away, uh, followed by the West Indies. And then I saw a reference, and maybe you can confirm this. I think it was Neil wrote about possibly India coming um, here for some one days in August. Is, is that um, a possibility or is that something that will happen or is assuming COVID is, is uh, done with? Um, let me start with your initial uh, question. Thanks, Colin. Um, yeah, I mean, look, obviously we, we put together a steerco on COVID, which, uh, you know, is headed up by Dr. Mandra and Dr. Hashramji, who you know, are looking at all these things and, and the committee's based, uh, you know, the decisions uh, are hugely important. Um, I think there's a protocol around these decisions that's had to be put in place as well, Colin, where we, we have to work uh, with the opposition, with, not the opposition, with the, you know, the boards from those countries. Um, so we are definitely in discussions with them and uh, I think decisions are going to be uh, you know, made pretty soon on those coming tours. Uh, in particular, the Sri Lankan tour is the first one for the Proteus men. Um, and uh, those tours will be postponed and, and if, 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 if COVID um, plays a role, then they'll be postponed and rescheduled. And, and the India, possibility of India coming here? Yeah, we, we, look, we, we're really hoping to, to close potentially T20s at the end of August with, with India. We are in consistent discussions with um, with the leadership of, of the BCCI. Um, obviously, you, you know, there's a lot of doubt around what's going to happen going forward um, at this stage, but uh, we are in consistent discussions with them. Thank you. Um, thank you, Colin. Uh, just Khalid next. Okay, thanks, Lucy. I, I Graham, this is for you. Um, it's about the South Africa A setup, and last appointment you made was with Ashwell Prince um, for a short period. Um, the consensus around that obviously was that maybe it can be too much for, for franchise coach to be able to run a franchise team and do the SIA job. Um, are you in talks again with Asheville and, or anybody else for that particular role? And do you see it more as a, a type of a, a team where it's a second best 11? Or do you think that it's an opportunity for youngsters to actually show that they can play at the national level? Thanks. Thank you. Um... I have had discussions with Asheville on it, uh, and you know we we were always going to run a full time process on a number of positions uh, coming in to sort of the end of the season, and, and the SAA is one of that. I think, you know, uh, based on where we are financially, we definitely need to strategize how we can maximize our appointments uh, across the board. Uh, you know, maybe we can make less appointments and work people harder in the, in the organization. And that's something from a strategic perspective we need to consider going forward. Uh, as Jacques has touched on a number of times, um, you know, the, 
sort of the financial position uh, will play a role on, on some of the decision making that we do make. Um, so yes, I have had discussions with Astral and uh, he will be a part of the process and going forward. Uh, we're putting his name in the hat. Um, so really the A team for me, I think it's crucially important that we get that back to being um, the number two uh, best team in the country. I, 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 um, you know, I, I think there's, you know, having been a youngster that went on an eight day tour to the Caribbean, showed initial promise, you know, I was very much part of one or two guys that went on a tour from a learning, uh, you know, in a growth perspective and identified as a talent. But around me, you know, there was certainly, you know, really strong, uh, hardened domestic uh, cricketers who had uh, applied their trade and, and, and that I could learn from as well, not only the coaching. So I'd like to bring an element of that back to our A side, um, to see them high performing, doing well, pushing for places in the, in the national side. Uh, and growing that pool of players that we, you know, we know who, who our next next tier are. Great, thank you very much. Uh, we will head over to the Afrikaans questions just from uh, Percival. I will also take Afrikaans questions. <laughs> <laughs> I just got very scared. I was going to say, good luck, Graham. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lucy. Um, firstly, congratulations. Uh, um, I'm, I'm Graham Smith to your appointment. Um, Graham, maybe just an opening question to you. For, firstly, um, the question of, of the appointment of, of, of the oh. national con convener of selectors, is that situation also still on hold at the moment? And then, Jacques, um, maybe you can ask a few questions for me. I'm going to get one bite at this cherry. Eh? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, say something for me, um, not in Afrikaans, and you're just going to ask a few questions. Net, wat, wat was die denkwijze achter um, Graham Smitse aanstelling op hierdie permanente basis? Die het, ge, het toe gepraat van die onzekerheid, um, onzekerheid oor COVID-19 en natuurlijk die financiële implicaties wat het het. Het lijkt my, jylle is nog redelijk gemakkelijk op die oomblik. Het bykie uitbrei in Afrikaans oor die situasie wat Krikus uit Afrika aan betref. En um, wat wil, wat wil jylle as Krikus uit Afrika wijzer word volgende, volgende week by die vergadering by die IK, IKR? Um, Waar jullie meer zeker zijn over hoe die internationale toeren gaan wees. Net so bykie meer um, daarover alsjeblieft, uh, meneer die uitvoerende woord, waarnemende uitvoerende woord. Um, um, Graham, you want to start? Sorry, what was the initial question? I was concentrating, concentrating so hard on the Afrikaans question, I forgot what was asked for me. So. You can always ask the Afrikaans as well. No, sir, I was just asking about the national convener of selectors, though. Is that, uh, uh, yes, that, that, that is the one that, that, that will be going out uh, this week. The advertisement on that will be going out uh, either today or actually Monday. I'll chase HR today. Um, but it's meant to be going out this week. So those appointments and strategy around that is, is also um, going to be handled over the next period. And, and when we made those appointments, these were just discussed. I mean, a lot of these, uh, just maybe for me to add and give context, I think a lot of, um, a lot of when we made these interim appointments, uh, these were all, uh, you know, uh, made clear to the guys in the job that these positions would, would be advertised um, going, going forward. And, and that's what's happened. And, they, and they're available to apply for the job as well. We want to make now, I guess, going forward, consistent, good decisions that uh, are in place for a period of time now. Great, thank you, Graham. And then Jacques, if you'll ask, answer the Afrikaans questions, please. Ons het verheugd met Graham wat besluit het om een permanente aanstelling te vat as die directeer van cricket. Ek denk hy het alreeds wonderlijke werk gedoen in die maanden wat hy betrokken was, sy leiderskap. Ek denk ek was deerslaggevend in een moeilijke omgeving. So ons is verheerd dat hy um, op een meer permanente basis betrokken gaan raak. Um, die volgende twee jaar is aangesteld dan einde, einde maart tween, ja, einde maart 2022. Um, en, um, weet ons, ek denk die hele krieke systeem sal baat um, by dit wat hy um, gaan bring um, vir, vir die protea's en ander krieke structure um, wat die krieke Zuid-Afrika bestuur word. 
En dat is nog steeds baie onzekerheid oor, oor die effect van, van, van die um, virus, COVID-19 virus. Um, ons het een strategie wat, wat ons uitrol, um, wat op vier pilaren staan. Die eerste ene is die veiligheid en, en die, um, ek denk die gezondheid van allemaal um, wat betrokken is en ons wil so verantwoordelijk moendlik kan optreden. Die tweede ene is om ons stem te gebruiken als sport, om Zuid-Afrikaners en ook die wereld te inspireren om die te doen om verantwoordelijk op te treden en ook om inspiratie te wees um, vir mense daar buiten. Die derde ene is om met ons belange groepe in, in contact te blijven en te kan verstaan hoe beinvloed uh, die krisis hulle en ek is een belangrike uh, aspect van ons strategie. En die vierde ene is om die financiële inpak um, te bestuur en te bepaal um, en, en dit is iets wat nou gaan uitrol, ons gaan sekere beplanning, sekere scenario's um, sal moet beplan en bespreek uh, ons was tot toe nou toe een beetje beskerm in, in dat ons aan ons afsluitsoen ingegaan het, maar jy sal verstaan dat die, um, die impact van die virus gaan, gaan groot op ons wees, soos het op ander sport ook, ook sal wees, um, en het gaan definitief die beskikbaarheid van fondse um, raak, en ons probeer soveel moendlik um, scenario's beplan, uh, om te kan sien hoe bestuur ons het um, effectief uh, in die toekomst. Dit is hier wel, ek weet nie waar nog iets is nie. Net, net die kwestie, net die kwestie oor um, volgende weekse vergadering met die met ICC, en natuurlijk, ek moet weet, hoekom, hoek, hoekom sê jy daar gaan minder geld beslis, minder geld beskikbaar wees vir spelers in die toekomst? Ja, ek denk wat gaan gebeur, en, en ons het al een beetje uitdagings gehad nog voor die krisis, um, dit gaan baie moeiliker wees om borgen te vervang um, tegen die self te bedraag waarvoor ons aanvankelijk gecontracteer het, en een goeie voorbeeld is bijvoorbeeld Standardbank, ek denk het sal baie moeilik vir ons wees om tegen die selwe bedraag, en dan selfs tegen een verhooging, inflasieverhooging te contracteer, want jy weet as die wereld in recessie is in Zuid-Afrika is in recessie, daar is al net een vorig minder geld en beskikbaar, en ek, ek denk dit is een voorspelling wat, wat, wat redelijk waar gaan wees, so mens kan maar voorsien en maak vir dit. So daar gaan een inkrimping van, van die fonds en wees Ons kyk na commentators in die, in die sportsindustrie en hulle verwacht enig iets tussen 20 en 35% een negatieve effect op iets soos borskap is. So, jy weet, dit is nie baie goed nie. Um, en, en natuurlijk in, in omgeving soos hierdie verwacht mense om een beetje minder te betaal, so dit gaan definitief een, jy weet, ongelukkig een negatieve invloed um, op ons hee. Um, die internationale cricketraad het uh, vergadering van al die uitvoerende hoofde van, um, van die lidlande um, en van die, van die hoofdletlande um, geroep, en dit, dit vind dan nou volgende donderdag plaas. Ons hoop om een beetje meer duidelijkheid te kry oor um, hoe, die, hoe die internationale kalender gaan lyk um, in die toekomst. Daar is ook nog steeds baie onzekerheid um, by die um, internationale cricketraad oor dinge, hulle is nou nie selle boekie as ons, um, maar hoopelik uit die conferentie kan ons gedagtes deel en hulle kan ons ook een beetje leiding gee um, met die pad voor en toe. Baie dankie. Thanks.